Coming up this week, off screen. Thor returns to face Ragnarok. There's a communist party with the death of Stalin. My Little Pony hits the big screen. There's a brawl in Cell Block 99. Chadwick Boseman is Marshall. We meet a secret superstar. Earth has one amazing day. Dina plays Dina in Dina. We celebrate a happy death day. And an eight-year-old girl insists she's not a witch. All those coming more, off screen. This is... This is off screen. Off screen. Off screen. the latest film news and reviews. This is Offscreen, the on-screen radio show. Welcome to Offscreen, I'm Vanko. I am Case Allen. So, Mr. Allen, before the news, the reviews, the usual fun, the box office top five, of which there's one that no one has seen, except people on Twitter. Mm. Um, shall we start with a piece of film news? Something big, something heavy. What have you got for me, sir? Uh, not much. <laughs> it's a slow news week. <laughs> yeah, I'm really scraping it. Slim, because I don't really want to keep talking about Harvey Weinstein or <laughs> all that stuff and of course there's been more of that coming to light but you know that's, that's what BBC News is for go, that, read, that, go exactly. read that yeah. let's talk about some fun exciting news of things that's going to happen in the future so uh, Reed Scott who is in the show Veep which I like very much you like, I like very yeah. much I like Reed Scott as well I, I didn't know his like name him. yeah I feel like he always he, he needs to find a property he needs to find a film property yeah. and he's found one What's he got? I don't think he's going to be the star. Well, I know he's not going to be the star because Tom Hardy's a star, but he's going to be in Venom. Oh, I think it's a Mad Max sequel. Because I'd watch Reed Scott in a Mad Max sequel. That's so out of place. It'd just be brilliant. That'd be pretty great. That'd be pretty great. Yeah. Um, so, Venom. I'm down with that. Yeah, it's, it's got a really good cast so far. I owe you an apology about our cast, by the way, good. because we differed We differed on a, a piece of information a couple of weeks ago was about that? who was the female actress that was, who was the actress that was joining it. And you had Michelle Williams Jones. and I had Jenny, Jenny Slate. And it turns out it's both. Oh, I knew it was both. Yeah, I didn't realise it was both. I, yeah. thought, I thought it was Michelle Williams and then Jenny Slate took it in the end. But it's both. Oh. Okay. I can't imagine them going for the same role. I don't know why. I, know. I like them both. I don't so. know. I'd, I'd be interested to see Jenny Slate starring in Manchester by the Sea. I'd love to see that. <laughs> be great. What was that film she was in? Um, was that the... the something Child? The, the Obvious, obvious Child. child. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. Oh, that was edgy. Yeah. That was really edgy for its time. <laughs> yeah. Like, here's, a, here's an indie comedy about abortion. Yep. Yep, because totally. that's a fun topic. It was it was funny. But it was, it was really movie, good. Yeah. yeah, I enjoyed it. And it's named after a Paul Simon song, so I'm like, I like to. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know why Paul Simon. So no, obviously not. Yeah. But you are the music man of the pair of us, to be fair. <laughs> and I come from far away. <laughs> what do you play? <laughs> <laughs> let's not do. This. Let's not. Let's not go down this road. It's a slippery slope, yeah. and we only got like fifty seconds left. <laughs> so, <laughs> should we just launch straight into the first review then? Uh, yeah. Let's go let's on. save ourselves. Let's let's and get this. Else. Let's get this one done. Okay. Because My Little Pony is here. What? My Little S- Pony yes. has hit the big Amazing. screen. Isn't Sia in this? Sia is in this. That's Emily great. Blunt is in this. Is she? Yeah. I actually have no idea who's in this. Yeah. Yeah. Liev Blunt Schreiber now. is in this. Michael Peña no is in this. Yeah. I, I think. Maybe he just likes being in animated films. Now. I think he is. <laughs> uh, Tay Diggs. I think Zoe Saldana turns up somewhere. Uh, Max Martini. I know. Yeah. Really? I can't remember. Her- Hercules Hansen. That's it. Herc Hansen. Thank you. Right. Okay. So right, I'm going to confess straight off the bat. I don't know an awful lot about My Little Pony. Okay, I am. I not... mean, you don't look the the type. No, I am not a brony, sir, <laughs> and uh, I will never pretend to be. Although I do now know the name of the so-called main six, M A N E six, who are the central characters. <sighs> I, I I do, I really do. So they are. Uh, is yeah, it go Tw- on. Twilight Sparkle, Applejack, uh, P- Pinkie Pie. Oh, that was my dad's name. Uh, that he does. Ah, uh, Rarity. Uh, th- Oh, I'm, 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 I'm trying not to look at the screen. Uh, okay, I've got four. I've got four down. There we are. But, four out of six, ain't bad. Four out of six. Oh, in Christian Chenoweth is in, in this as well. Of, uh, me love. There you go. Uh, yeah, Christian Chenoweth is in this as well. Right, oh, so nice. the idea is... In does, the... Does, she, does she sing at all? I'm honestly not sure who voiced what in the actual film itself. I knew I, I can recognized imagine she, she would Emily say. Blunt. That was it. Right. I didn't recognise the voice cast until I actually looked it up right now. No, um, no, no, right there. Um, so the idea is that... Uh, Crazy Eyes? Crazy Eyes. Oh, my God, Crazy oh. Eyes is in this. Okay, cool. I'm on board with that. Oh, Tay Diggs. We're finding even more. Tay Actually, Diggs I, think, I, think, I, think, I think that's it. Rip McKillip. <laughs> I know her from uh, Dead Like Me. And then the Seer, obviously. Yeah. Tara Strong is Princess Twilight because she voices every animated thing ever This is now. a really gripping podcast, oh, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Oh, so, right, audio. 
let's let's go let's get back to it then okay so the idea is princess sparkle is preparing for the friendship festival and uh, she's got a oh, is it about time of year right? it's that time of year time for the friendship festival and she uh, she's got the big star uh, singer played by Sia to come along and who's there yet and she's surrounded by two bodyguards I like that she's got her hair she's got her hair That's yeah great. Uh, but as the performance is about to, I'll tell you what, this is her turning up for the performance and, and as you would imagine everything has gone wrong just as she turns up and they are all covered in cake here's a clip is it really her it is it is hiya I'm looking for the pony in charge I need to set up for my sound check a songbird serenade? Um, I was just going to check on you. I'm Princess Twilight, and sorry about the mess. I'm usually not so... Uh, oh, caked in cake? <laughs> you have visual on buttercream. Visual confirmed. Go for cleanup. So it is kind of twee and, and, and you know, clearly four, six, four, six year old girls, uh, which notably uh, I am not a six year old girl. Um, so well, <laughs> I know, I know it's shocking given my height and stature. I am not a six year old girl, so I thought the beard gave it away. Um, anyway, um, I, I, I'll be honest, I've, I've seen far worse animated efforts. In the course of reviewing, I've, I've been shown uh, far, far more lackluster efforts than this. This did have a very much of a sort of kind of mid 90s. 90s uh, TV series that gets a, a director DVD animated feature mm. sort of a feel to it. I don't know if this is not going to be in 3D in cinemas because it did ha- seem to have a lot of that 3D effect sheen to it. The musical numbers kind of work. The characters are yeah they're likable enough for what they are. Again, I would imagine if I was a six year old girl, I'd probably go nuts for this. Um, I'm reliably told the fan base is rabid for this and you know the whole thing. Um, I, I could go and I could talk at length about uh, how they're not ponies, they're unicorns, and also they're not ponies. They're Pegasuses because they have wings, but my Pe- Pegasi, my Pegasi unicorn doesn't quite have the same ring to it. No. Um, I did like, I did, I kind of liked it for what it was, but you know, I'm not the audience for this. It's not, it doesn't grip me in the same way that, for instance, Captain Underpants did. But then again, I can relate to that more because of the gender divide. I think um, it had, you know, it had its its charms in its own little <laughs> weird cutified technicolor way. Um, the, the design of it is very anime and. Inspired. I found that that really works for it. It does. It works with the sort of spectacle they're going for. They do tack on a sort of pirate kind of a storyline, complete mm. with Zoe Saldana, which is just odd seeing as she actually played a pirate. She was a pirate. She was a pirate. Yeah. She was the original Pirates of the Caribbean girl, which we never remember now. Yeah, she, she's only she's in one. Isn't she's she? in one, and it never gets brought up. She never comes back in any of the sequels. Isn't she owed the Black Pearl? Yes, but never mind. Um, yeah, those movies make no sense. But, no, but this makes more sense than those movies. So yeah, um, I would say if you have a young daughter and she is a My Little Pony fan, obviously you have no excuse to take. Or her if to you are a brony, or if you are a brony, um, I came away from it not necessarily uh, converted over to the cause of bronyhood, if that's <laughs> its term. Um, but I do have about ten percent more respect for the culture of My Little Pony now, mm. which is to say, you know, it's 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 perfectly fine. It's not for me. It's fine. But uh, you know, I'm I'm more, I'm more of a Power Rangers guy when I like my kids' shows. So yeah, yeah. but not the Power Rangers film, not the Power Rangers movie. That not sucked. The, not not the new one. Anyway. Not the new one. The '94 one rocked. Give me more Ivan Ooze. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want Ooze. <laughs> we need Ooze in our lives, man. <laughs> but uh, no, My Little Pony. I, I I got on with it. It was perfectly fine. It, it trotted along. It was uh, maybe about ten minutes too long. It's about an hour forty. Mm. But uh, yeah. Is what it is. You know what you're getting. It's written on the tin. So, uh, plug the podcast edition real Do quick, it. shall we? So, um, get the extended podcast edition, which this week includes at least two really good films that we don't get time to talk about on the radio edit. Mm. So, um, uh, we've got that. We've got more news. We've got The Moment of Cage, which is always a good way to cap things off. And, uh, yes, you can find that on Acast, where you get the digital bling. You can skip to the relevant bits that you want. Uh, you can get it on iTunes. You can get it on Deezer. You can get it on TuneIn. And, of course, if you go onto the on screen film website, which is onscreenfilm.com you can get it on there as well you can also while you're still there enter competitions and win swag and we've got some goodies we've got loads we've got fun, loads of goodies we actually have to write them down now and there's currently four of them there's four of them that are running this I've only minute I've our account to free well, <laughs> you're just the right mental age for My Little Pony, then. I have right now. <laughs> yeah. So we've got uh, DVDs of The Exception, which you and I both uh, oh, seem to enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got... Oh, no, you didn't review that one, did you? Did 
Did you see it? Then? I've seen it. Yeah. You've seen it. Okay. Uh, we've got DVDs of Gifted to give away, which I I've quite not liked. seen that, and I do want to see that because yeah. I like Chris Evans. Right. We've got Blu-rays and novels for a man called Ove or Uve or however you want to pronounce this it. This is the Tom Hanks one. That's got the to one be that's being remade with Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks yeah. yeah. And we've got merchandise packs for the Lego Ninjago movie, <gasps> which includes a gym bag, which includes an ACDC shirt, which includes all sorts A3 colouring sheets. Includes it's got all sorts. That sounds in amazing. There. But yeah, so get on there, win some Lego Ninjago swag, and while you're at it, some home releases for yourself as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we all want something to watch, and this way you get them for free, and all it costs That's you better, is isn't it? like ten seconds of typing. With the latest film news and reviews, this is Off Screen, the On Screen Radio Show. And we're back, Mr. Allen. So uh, before we do another bit of news, then should we do one quick review? Uh, yes, absolutely. So we're going to talk about Happy Death Day, Happy. which I really want to see because it looks like loads of fun. It is. It is yeah. actually fun. Yeah. Okay. So basic concept for this one: a, a sort of bitchy, te- a bitchy college age girl uh, wakes up on the morning of her birthday, mm. having uh, clearly just gone home with a guy that she she met at some party the night before. She wakes up, has uh, you know, sort of eventful birthday, loads of personal interactions, things like that, and uh, then um, he is murdered. Gutted. Yeah, it literally, yeah. Yeah, yeah, literally, literally gutted. gutted. Yeah. Uh, and then she wakes up back in the dorm room where she wakes up with the guy and it's her birthday mm. again. So, so far, so Groundhog Day. So far, so Groundhog Day. And then before you know it, she's gutted again. And then she wakes up and, yeah, you see where this is going. Yeah. Here's a clip. Look, I know this isn't going to make any sense, but I have already lived through this day. Twice. Tree. No, I, no, uh, no, believe me, I know it sounds totally crazy, but this is happening to me, I swear to God. Tree, I'm sure it feels like you're like. Okay, me. okay, you made me a cupcake for my birthday, right? You're about to give it to me, and then later on tonight, there's a surprise party. <sighs> Who told you? Was it back No, you know? no, nobody told me, that's what I mean. Don't you see, I know what is going to happen before it happens. Jesus, Lori. Somebody's gonna kill me tonight. So this thing has done so well in America, hasn't it? Oh yeah, tremendously mm. well. Crazy numbers. Uh, well, it's a Blumhouse film. You know, they they, they do the micro budget thing. Yeah, do, um, do it for like two or three million. Yeah. I like get out. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, and the money's there on the screen, and it, it doesn't look cheap or inexpensive. It looks like a fully fledged, you know, high end production. It looks like the kind of thing New Line would spend twenty five on, you know, twenty five mil on. That's the thing. Horror films will always have an audience, and they will always, always make money. Oh God, yeah. We could get out nicely, keep, proved yeah. that for us, didn't it? Um, Just keep doing it. So the best way to describe this is Edge of Tomorrow run through a Final Destination filter. Cool. Which I'm and good I, with. I, I like them both. Yeah, I'm good with that. Um, it has that that chop choppy choppy sensibility. I suppose of, this uh, hasn't been done sooner. This kind of a uh, kind of an idea. Yeah, it does have the stabby sensibilities yeah. of it's a very creepy uh, mask, Final Destination, big, uh, baby face mask. That's it. it's very vintage. Yeah, uh, Miramax kind of horror movie. Very isn't it? instantly recognisable. Sorry, it? Dimension, not Miramax. Oh, Stop you mentioning can't Miramax. Dirty word. You can't do that. Yeah, sorry, not 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 the not the double M. Sorry. Uh, no, it does have a very Dimension <laughs> kind of a kind of an aesthetic to it. But at the same time, yeah, we could we, we could talk about Bob for now. We we'll talk about Bob for now. Yeah. Um, so Jessica, Jessica uh, Rothe or Roth? How are you pronouncing that? I'll, I'll go with Rothe. Rothe. It, it sounds uh, exotic. Right. She's actually because I've just looked her up, up in front of you here. I don't really know her from anything. No. Let's she's. Uh, it have a look because I don't really know anything. Know any of her stuff. Um, she's actually a hell of a find here. She was in uh, La La Land, apparently. Was she? In, okay. Well, I bet she's. She, she'll mean? be in there like like passing. I guess. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> But she's oh look hang on there we are she's uh, Emma Stone's oh, right. best friend she's like one, one of her one of her housemates one of her housemates right so the idea uh, her casting here actually proves something of a discovery the way it works is she starts out as this sort of icy bitchy sassy kind of a character mm. and basically gets humanised as proceedings go on as as basically it starts to wear her down and that's actually the the best possible way to play it. I mean there's an offhand sort of a reference that. Uh, there's a physical toll being taken, but it never really kind of gets fleshed out. There are a bunch of little mini plots that don't go anywhere. Mm. And when you do get to the big actual plot, it doesn't kind of resolve itself in a way that particularly makes any sense. But you know what? It's so much fun getting there that you don't care. Because mm. it is just, you know, 
get, go walk home alone at night, get stabbed, kind of thing. You know, it's <laughs> it's literally that movie over and over. Yeah, and but it, but it's not the film A Girl Walks Home. <laughs> it's, not, it's not A Girl Walks Home. A very different movie. Yeah. Film. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Israel Israel Broussard, I think, who plays the uh, the would be love interest. Uh, I liked him very much as well. I'm trying to remember the name of the actress who I thought absolutely stole this. Rachel Matthews as the uh, the sorority hmm. uh, the sorority house sort of head. Absolutely owns this as yeah, basically the, Cord- the Cordelia character, effectively. Right, yeah. yeah, which when you consider how sort of sassy the lead starts off as, is really saying something. These kind of films are great. Like we watched mm. uh, the Babysitter <gasps> the other day. I did as well. I loved yeah. it. How good is Samara Weaving? Man, I I enjoyed a McGee film. I know. I feel dirty as well. How do I go on? I uh, steel wool. Shower steel with steel yeah. wool. Shower don't, with steel Don't leave the shower wool. until like all your skin has been removed. Yeah, you, you wanna yeah. you come away looking like the end of that Simpsons Halloween special <laughs> yeah. when they're just all they're just organs. Out, yeah. yeah. Um but no, Happy Death Day, really loved it. Uh, really got on with it. Really had a good time with it. I laughed a lot. <laughs> I bought there were a couple of decent jumps in there. Yeah, really got on with it. Thought it was a great time. So, yeah, over to you, sir. What you got for me? Cool. Um, I love this news. Go on. Um, so, there's going, it's going to be a film called Groove Tales. Groove Tales? What do you think Groove Tales is about? It's a spin off of DuckTales. It's, it's a street like, dancing spin off of DuckTales. You are not far off from Am that. I not far off? Not about DuckTales, unfortunately. Okay. But it is about street dancing. Okay. About street dancing mice. It's animated, isn't it? Okay. Yes. Uh, well. <laughs> It could be. Well, Technology is not yet advanced to the point where we can. CGI hybrids, you know? <laughs> Oh, somebody. Somebody's, somebody's cooking why, up. why are we wasting money trying to like, cure cancer and <laughs> create colonies in space? What are we Clearly doing? Clearly, the future is the CGI live action hybrid street dancing mouse movie. So, what's the news on this one? <laughs> I can't go on. <laughs> um, Dave Batista yeah. is going to be voicing various roles. So, hopefully, variant mice. I think... It's just, did I hear that Jamie Foxx Jamie Foxx is involved. He's producing it as well. Oh, of course he is. Yeah. That's a marker of quality Because right you think Street Nights of Mice, you think... Guy Jamie who Fox. played Ray, Ray Charles. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I love that. I, the, t- the title is quite good. You've got to give him that. Groove, Groove Tales. Tales. Yes. Yeah, I'm on that. board with that. Also, it's just going to be backflipping, street dancing, Mice, I can, I can, yeah. Yeah, I can see Dave Batista bringing some, totally uh, do that. some, yeah. some gravel throatedness to that. <laughs> but I just uh, like most of Guardians yeah. two films. Like that. I'd like to see Michael Rooker like, oh god, voice, <laughs> voice, voice, mice. <laughs> He just turns up. You don't dance like that, boy. <laughs> I'm a street dancing mouse, y'all. <laughs> oh, we, we're not topping that. We're not topping no. that at all. Oh, we should, should we do the top ten? Uh, I think we're going Number five. Botox. Botox. I don't know what this is. It, I mean, is it, spe- is it Botox? <laughs> I don't know. Is it, it Botox? Is it Buttocks? No one knows. No one knows. It is a Polish movie. Okay. Uh, it was not press screened. I have not seen it. You, I believe, have uh, have someone from Twitter to, who's seen it. Uh, so I'll, That's I'll... right. I do. Okay, so you, you know more than I do. Um, so on which note, I will, uh, I will respectively ask, what does, uh, what does Twitter make of, of this particular one? Peter Sison, or at... <laughs> great handle there, Peter. At Velvet Cactus 198 Yeah. Incredible. Uh, hashtag Botox. Massive change in tone from gross-out comedy skits to poignant female empowerment drama. Hashtag PSFR G1. Hashtag Cineworld Unlimited. Okay, so there's, 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 a, there's a plug for Cineworld. Okay, so yes, Cineworld was showing this. We, we know that much at least. Um, fair enough. Number four. Manners. Maketh. Man. Kingsman, The Golden Circle. You got to see this, didn't you? Uh, yeah, what a treat. <laughs> it really is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I know I'm not alone in this now. That's no, what it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's what I thought it was going to be, and what I thought it was going to be was disappointing. Yeah. In fact, because I thought that's what it was going to be, I guess it wasn't disappointing. I guess it lived up to my expectations. <laughs> so in that way, job done. It met your low bar. <laughs> it met my very low bar. That was fine. I just thought it missed any of the sharpness and the wit of the first movie and just became kind of crass and vulgar and yeah. stayed that way. I think it's the first film post-Prince Death to feature a Prince song. Is it? Mm. So I think that's that's quite... That's quite a thing. That That's the only remarkable thing about it. That, that must have cost some coin. Yeah, yeah. probably. I think they've got the budget to spare on this one, though, evidently. Well, you can see it all on the screen. And yes. They want you to see it. It's all there, including that three-day oh. shooting appearance from, from Chantete. Yeah. But, uh, and, like, 
it's it's quite noticeable, isn't it? That those new casting editions they share very little to zero screen time. Oh yes, definitely. Like Jeff Bridges, that's an afternoon shooting tops. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what's Twitter got no matter? So at oh that is you are terrible handle. Okay, terrible. terrible handle. Handle. Okay. He yeah. says um, hashtag Kingsman. The Golden Circle was good, but compared to the first one, it's pretty meh. I'd say it's even worse than that. Number three. The Snowman. Which I thought was lacklustre and uninteresting, kind of dull. It like needed a, more uh, Alan Jones It singing. did need more Alan Jones. Do you know what I love? In the, the uh, in the trailer, they actually they include the line, I think the snow triggers him. You're like, you live in Norway. I mean, if, if snow <laughs> triggered you to commit murder, you'd go somewhere else. You'd go somewhere else. Yeah. And it's kind of an example as to why this actually works as a book, but really not <laughs> as a film. Yeah, I think uh, I, would, I would like to be with Muck. Yeah. Yeah, I like some uh, Joe Nesbo. Yeah. So, uh, apparently it's Yo. Apparently it's Yo Nesbo. Is it? According to Fastbender. <laughs> Yo Nesbo! <laughs> That's it. How do you get an author's attention? Yo Nesbo! <laughs> <laughs> so what's Twitter got the matter? Uh, at Noah House. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's actually that, his name. That's so your that's name. Yeah. I cannot criticise that, for my name is Case. <laughs> um, watched hashtag the snowman. I'm speechless. By far the worst... No, I'll say that again. By far of the worst films I've seen this year. The, I'm going to say exactly how they've liked. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep. The spelled... Um, the managed to screw up pretty much everything. So, obviously, a fan of the book, and uh, not that great of a speller. Number two... Blade Runner 2049. It's amazing, but Vangelis doesn't do the music, so I can only give it a D. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I'll go with that. <laughs> you drop needs, the ball in music Needs there. more Vangelis. Do you not find that odd, though? It is one of the most auditorially stunning mo- movies of the last oh, decade yeah, or yeah. so, it is, and yet it is it's amazing. still not as good as the first one. <laughs> <laughs> and yet it still needs Vangelis. <laughs> it still needs some Vangelis. It needs more dog. Um, yeah. It's much one of those things. Um, I think it's an amazing movie. I really do. I think it's a fantastic fantastic sequel mm. um, I can see why it perhaps hasn't resonated quite as well overseas as they would hope because it's a, it's a quite a cerebral movie but then again the first one was so you kind of know what to expect with yeah. this one going I like in. that a lot of uh, people have been talking about its uh, lack of box office success but the no. first one the did. first one was <laughs> yeah it's still more successful than the first one was yeah it was crazy uh, so we've got a tweet uh, yeah so a guy by the name of Jason Inman or oh, yeah. at Jarwin I believe this is a gentleman who works for Screen Junkies is it Oh, okay. Yes, it is. He says, I thought Hashtag Blade Runner 2049 was a rare sequel that improved and surpassed the original film. A lot of people have said that. I I'm, I might be inclined to agree, but I'd have to see it again. On a technical level, it certainly does. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely on a technical level. So far, Denis Denis is hitting out of the park. He really is, isn't I've, he? I've seen all the Denis so far, and I love them all. Number one. The Lego Ninjago movie. I was waiting for some kind of idents. Oh, uh, we didn't but, uh, quite have one on, on time for this one. I, maybe we'll go with Everything is Awesome next week. What do you think? Oh, oh no, wait, I've got it. I've got the perfect one. We'll go with Ash Kung Fu. There we nice. are. Nice. Sold. Uh, right, so... Deep pull. <laughs> Deep pull. Well, I just, it, it's got references to Jackie Chan in it, so. Uh, yes, it does, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, 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 oh. I, I love that song. Yeah. So mid 90s. So, so 97. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like Lego, Lego Ninjago. I think it's the weakest of the three movies, and yet it's yeah, still great. Yeah, but still very Still great. Yeah, I've, I've not seen it, but I, I am looking forward to it. But So, have we got a tweet on the matter? Yes. Um, at Robin. Tiax? Tiax? I, so. I think it's Tia, Tia Kiss. But... Tia Kiss? I think okay. so. Well, her name, he says Robin, and then a cup of coffee. So I, you know, fair play. Fair play. Oh, yeah, fair play. Coffee too. Yeah. She says 10 out of 10 for Hot Day Franco, but fair 6 play. out of 10 for Lego Ninjago. I take umbrage of that because you don't see, I mean, I've, I've not seen it, but I can imagine you don't see Dave Franco as Dave Franco in that film. No, no, you don't. You then, don't. But this, you know what? This, this lady is attracted to a Lego minifig. You know what? We all have our we've, fetishes. We've the line. I've seen My Little Pony. We all have our fetishes. With the latest film news and reviews, this is Off Screen, the on screen radio show. You love rocking out to that, don't you? Uh, I, I love rocking out. Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, it's good. God gave rock and roll to you. So, um, Marshall. Yes. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it because I love me some Chadwick Boseman and I loved that Black Panther trailer. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I, I saw it on the big screen uh, the other night before, uh, before I thought it got genuine, got a round of applause. 
Oh man, the whole, I, can, I can imagine. Yeah. And you saw it at uh, Marvel friendly events as well. The Marvel friendly event, yeah. Well, um, we had that and Last Jedi. Yeah. Oh yeah, Sterling K. Brown's in this as well. I love Sterling K. Brown. Right, great cast. He's uh, Josh Gad, Kate Hudson, mm. Sterling K. Brown, Dan, Dan Stevens, Stevens. James yeah. Cromwell's in there as well. Keisha Sharp. I don't know if James Cromwell's uh, in that. Of course, because you need a racist judge. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's just I, a thing, I, isn't I it? I imagine he gives yeah. good racist judge. That's just who you get, isn't it? Yeah. You just get James Cromwell. You get um, into that or to be a pig farmer. Yeah, totally. Yeah, well, one, one of the two. Or, or drunken, uh, drunken space adventurer. Um, In fact, no, he's not a pig farmer. He's, a, he's just a farmer. He's just a farmer. Just a just, farmer. He's got sheep dogs. He's, he just has a pig. He, and yeah. yes, yeah. we got sidetracked. We got sidetracked. Jimmy Cromwell. I want to point out he did invent the Star Trek universe as well. So you know. yes, he did. He did. He did find found oh, the future. Special. Um, and also, it's got Keisha Sharp from uh, the Lethal Weapon TV series. But uh, so so good so far. What so good so far. About? Okay, so this is young Thurgood Marshall, mm. who of course most of us know from having then gone in his later years to be on the Super UN United States Supreme Court. Um, he this basically plays like in cold blood meet Shaft. If you can imagine that. It's a period piece. It's the 1940s. Thurgood, at this point, is a lawyer for the NAACP who gets sent to a small town to defend a black man who has been falsely accused of a crime based entirely on his race. Uh, The accused is played by uh, Sterling K. Brown, which is kind of a weird inverse from the American Crime Story thing. Yeah, yeah. uh, Yeah, so he's the defendant and not the lawyer for a change. He's the accused and not the lawyer. Mm. Um, And, of course, no sooner has he gotten there than Chaddy Bozeman is inundated with small-town racism, bigotry, and outright hatred. Here's a clip of... Pretty much his swagger. University of Maryland Law School was walking distance from home. They didn't accept color, so I had to go to Howard. An hour and a half each way by bus and well known as a school for failures. That's too bad. No, no, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. They just brought in a new dean, Charles Hamilton Houston. Turned that place around, taught me everything I know, including how to sue the University of Maryland. You sued them. You bet your ass I did. As soon as I passed the bar. So Josh Gad and Chadwick Boseman there. And first of all, like I say, In Cold Blood Meat Shaft is the best way to describe this because it has got a bit of, rather than disco funk in the Shaft case, this goes jazz funk. <laughs> and it really works. This has got that down. It's it, it, It's got that whole, you know, that wonderful John Grishamy time to kill kind of a pacing to it. Mm-hmm. And Chadwick Boseman, totally up for it. Did you know that John Grisham wrote uh, the book that the film uh, Christmas with the Cranks is based on? I did not know that. And... Now I wish I didn't. Why would you do yeah. this to me? I don't know. I was just, I, I was thinking about film the other day and I remembered that he wrote the book and it just seems like the kind of thing that he would not write. That's, that's terrible. I feel like I've ruined your Christmas. You kind of have, yeah. Thanks for ruining Christmas. Carry on. I've got the movie Better Watch Out to look forward to though. So oh, I'll, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is directed by uh, Reginald uh, Hudlin who directed Boomerang many, many years ago. Oh, man, that? I forgot yeah. about our film. But, yeah, ever since, seems to have just been a TV director. Like, he's directed a lot of episodes of shows we watch. Things like, like New Girl mm. and mm. Uh, Blackish and yeah, shows like that. Just sort of network TV shows. Yeah. shows we like. Network comedies now. Um, this is then something of a departure because there's not really much outright comedy in this. It is funny at times, but it's funny for a witty one-liner, a bit of sass, and basically Chadwick Boseman sticking it to the man, literally in this case. Um, absolute star-making turn for him. Um, very much. Oh, he's already a star, isn't he? Well, he is, but yeah, yeah, I say he is, but I, th- I think the mainstream haven't quite. He's not a household name yet. And the mainstream needs to like go by getting up on DVD, like stat. <laughs> they really do. They really do. Um, and this is deservedly why this is an amazing movie. Um, Get On Up, I, I thought he was brilliant in that. I think he's great here too. I think Josh Gad as well deserves a lot of props. Yeah, Josh Gad is in a lot of films like this, but when he is, yeah, yeah. really good in them. And I will say this as well, Dan Stevens really asserting himself as what we've already declared to be this century's Carrie Elwes. Yeah. Because that's who you would get for this role. If it was 20 years ago, you'd still have James Cromwell playing the racist judge, you but you'd have Carrie Elwes as the lawyer. So, yeah, uh, Dan Stevens would be a good uh, a Dread Pirate Roberts, I feel. I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think so. So, over you got a bit of news for me real quick? Well, I think we should talk about Death of Stalin because I know that you want to talk quite a bit about that. So let's just <laughs> dive Death of Stalin. Okay. In right. that. Fair enough. Because right. I, I love the thick of it and I love Envelope and I love, love I love Veep as well. All things so, that Armando Inucci has created. So what would you say then about a spin-off presumably set in the same universe but taking place in Soviet Russia in the 1950s? I'd say take all my money. Right. Okay. So this literally opens with the death of Stalin. 
Well, not literally opens, but in the first sort of five, ten minutes, Death of Stalin. And uh, just, just yeah, I know you're looking at the cast members just gone out, and I know. Um, stop caressing images of Andrea Riseborough. And she is terrific in this, incidentally. Right, so yeah, Stalin amazing. dies. No sooner, no sooner has he dropped dead than his inner circle basically start turning on one another in that brilliant Armando Iannucci-ish way, trying to basically assert which one of them is going to succeed him. Uh, this cast... And they're all made up of genuine historical figures. So, as Nikita Khrushchev, you have Steve Buscemi. Perfect casting. Mm. As uh, General Zhukov of the Soviet Army, you have Sir Jason of Isaacs. Mm. Hello. As Stalin's son, you have Rupert Friend. As his daughter, you have Andrea Riseborough. As, Mel- as uh, Malenkov, you've got uh, Jeffrey Tambor. <laughs> um, it, honest to God, this, this is... Oh, and Michael Palin is Molotov. And, so wow, really- okay, but... All of this centres around uh, around Beria, who is played here by Simon Russell Beale, and he is the manipulative KGB boss that you absolutely think he's going to be. And it basically becomes, who is going to screw over the rest of them to the best degree that they might get to take over and run the Soviet Union? Here's a clip. Uh, and basically, this is, this is Steve Buscemi trying to console Andrea Riseborough. No matter what happens, I will never, ever let any harm come to you or your brother. Who said anything about harm? No, that's what I'm you saying. You know that somebody wants to harm they us? There's going to be Tell no, me. If someone... I demand to, to know. No, there's, I should not have used the word harm. Yes, but you keep mentioning the word harm. No. Why? <laughs> if anyone tries to you, they'll have to get through me first. <laughs> My father's going to die, and I'm going to have you to look after me. I mean, I may as well just shoot myself like mother. We need to be strong and never afraid. Yeah, well, I wasn't afraid. Now I am afraid. No, no, don't be, because if any harm... I, God, I actually can't believe you said that again. Quick, the bus is back! This is laugh-a-minute hilarious. This is <clears throat> funnier even than any episode of The Thick of It, In the Loop, or, uh, or Veep. Genuinely, this is... Fun. And if you can't tell from the clip, the central gag seems to be that he's just let everyone keep their accents. So rather than go with everyone speaking <laughs> in the same dull sit yeah. in Soviet Russia, car drives you kind of a voice, um, you've got everyone doing their own accents, including Steve Buscemi, who's playing Khrushchev, as an American, and it shouldn't work, but it does. This opens mm-hmm. with a scene featuring Paddy Considine as a music hall uh, operator, and it's one of the funniest openings to a movie I've seen in years. Um, it's got an absolute scene stealing turn from Jason Isaacs. I won't spoil for you what that involves. I will just say, from the moment he arrives in this movie, you have never loved him more. And also, he kind of owes Sean Bean a debt of gratitude. But, uh, yeah, 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 you look confused. Wait till you see the movie. Anyway, it's genuinely... So he right. dies? No. <laughs> Why would I say Sean Bean? You think that's the first thing? Because it's Sean Bean. <laughs> you, no, say, you say to you know anyone what? Sean Bean, you think, oh, he's Sean dead. Bean is not just a one-trick pony, you know. He has other skills. For one thing, he's very good at getting married. Anyway, <laughs> I'm guessing he's done it six times. So, Has he really? Yeah, I think he's had like six marriages. Wow. But yeah, I know. But uh, anyway, so uh, really, really great movie. Really sharp, like <laughs> razor sharply written. Mm. Like, honest, like, seriously. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's what you'd expect. Really, this is it? like Ginsu knife sharp. This, like, you know those knives that cut, can through, cut through cans? cans? Cut through cans? Yeah. yeah, this can cut through cans. Um, I've never loved a girl so much you give a 12 sharp can. 12 sharp knives. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really honestly came away from this. I loved every minute of it. Uh, I saw this with uh, Chris Honeyset, who'd seen it multiple times at that point. And going into it, I just couldn't understand why. And then when I came out, I mean, said to him, yeah, I understand now absolutely why you saw that again, because I would have. Mm. Uh, it, I genuinely laughed myself till it hurt. <laughs> And then I kept laughing. And that's a skill that only Armando Alanich can bring out of me. With the latest film news and reviews, this is Offscreen. And we're back. So, hi. Over to you, sir. What you got for me? Something newsy. Isn't there a Star Wars y thing this week? I don't know what Star Wars means. What? What is that? Star, <laughs> Star, Star Trek. So we're trying to. Stargate. Stargate. Actually, Stargate is coming back with, as a new series, and they have just cast their lead, and oh, it's a kind of an unknown. Oh. But yeah, it's an it's a, like an online exclusive series. Oh, is it going to be like 
like with Star Trek, it's going to be like a CBS All Access kind of a yeah. But it's their new, their new streaming platform, Stargate Command. Oh, just go away already! Know, like we can't, we we don't have like two hundred pounds to be. You know, I know. All, all these like six ninety nine, seven ninety nine. They're all going to add oh, up. Guess better. Their streaming platform. They are charging. I think it's like twenty quid for six months. Oh well, you know, no one's going to do that. Yeah, of course they're not. Because you just buy the box sets, wouldn't you? So, yeah. yeah. Um, no, we do have Star Wars news. Um, so, um, is this about the untitled Han Solo spin-off movie? Uh, no, it's about the titled Han Solo <laughs> spin-off movie. <laughs> and what is the title that they have been hanging over us for many months? But so, like everyone has known what it's going to be anyway, because it's, it's so Castle Run, isn't it? Fully obvious. Is it Castle Run? A no, Star Wars I wish story? it was. It would be way better. It would have. What is it? Nice. Nice. It is Solo, a Star Wars story. Wow. So when they were calling, so you, it- might, you might as well. Just- Bloody told us that from the start. So when they were calling it Red Cup as a working title, as like a, 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 a oh, working title, that actually might have been too clever for them. Yeah. Okay. And that's why they were fired. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like we don't like puns. Well, apparently, it's it's finished now. It's in post, and it is still coming out in May. Yeah. Okay. Do it. Fair enough. I'd rather than just push it back because I want to see Star Wars just own Christmas every year. Yeah, I kind of would as well, to be honest. Also, you know, we're going to have the Yoda movie like a year after that as well. My, <laughs> my, my summers are too crowded. I don't need Star Wars in the summer. That's it. I feel like Marvel owned the summer, so let's let Star Wars have Christmas. That being said, Marvel are bringing out a film in the autumn, and that film is... Thor Ragnarok, baby. It's Sadly. summer time. So, okay, so Thor Ragnarok, third... And final Thor solo movie. Right. I think we, 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 we're told, we're told in advance, aren't we? The easiest last one, isn't it? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I think that was just, that was assumed. Yeah. Because obviously we, we got three caps, we got three Iron Men. It's, we're going to have three Thors and that's it. Okay, right, fine. So, it's um, a couple of years after the end of Age of Ultron. We are told in literally the opening moment of the film. Oh, we, we, there's, we, we're spared one thing this time, by the way. What's that? We are spared Anthony Hopkins narrating events that took place 5,000 years ago. Shame. So, yeah, yeah. In its place, what you have is a madcap comedic adventure that literally hits the ground running. And as Thor tells us, the minute Age of Ultron ended, he's been on a mission of his own. I won't go into it, but he's been on a mission of his own. And that mission sees him and Loki go on a cosmic road trip, best way to describe it, <laughs> um, during which Thor finds himself in a space gladiatorial arena facing none other than the Hulk. And I tell you what, Here's a clip. Hey! Hey! We know each other. He's a friend from work. (coughs) Where have you been? Everybody thought you were dead. There's so much has happened since I last saw you. I lost my hammer, like yesterday, so that's still pretty fresh. Loki, Lo- Loki's alive, can you believe it? He's, uh, he's up there. Loki, look who it is! So there's definitely an, an em- a newly beefed up emphasis on the humour this time around. A lot of that obviously is the influence of Taika Waititi, uh, because no one's ever accusing him of not being a comedically driven <laughs> filmmaker. Yeah. And uh, the influence of his body of work is felt throughout this film. You, you can't you can't escape it. And to begin with, you you start feeling like it might be suffering from a little bit of what sank the Dark World to an extent, which was the kind of disconnected, episodic sort of style of it. However, because the emphasis on comedy is what it is this time around, that sort of gets dealt with quite quickly, and it works. Whereas Dark World still feels kind of episodic. Um, With the sort of emphasis on on the comedy side as well, Chris Hemsworth noticeably feels more awake here than he did in the previous two. And it turns out he really is a solidly good comic actor. Well, we also saw Ghostbusters. Well, yeah, Ghostbusters, (laughs) um, Vacation as well. I thought it was quite funny in that. But this is that for an entire film and for a superhero movie. (laughs) Um, Tom Hiddleston is kind of treading water a little bit as Loki because there's not really anything for him to do here that he hasn't really done before. Um, I think the, the stakes have shifted a little bit, but you know, it, it, it is kind of the similar thing. There's um, there's an emphasis on a sort of a, 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 a leadership dynamic and things like that. And, and there's lots of wonderful little 
very organic ties into things, into into jokes and into uh, you know plot holes and things like that. That you think, okay, this is threatening to go a bit meta. And it never quite goes that way. But actually, what sticks out more than anything is... You remember the way that Guardians of the Galaxy 2 very stylistically feels very rooted in the 70s? This feels very rooted in the 80s. Very synth wave. Very, yeah, we've said that, haven't we? We said yeah. that um, it's like Big Trouble in Little China, those kind of films. Very much, and you can't yeah. escape that, and it does feel very much 8-bit video game at times. Very much 8-bit video game to lie. Um, obviously, it's not going to be a surprise to you that Jeff Goldblum kind of steals the show, because he's, he's Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> he's, Goldblum. <laughs> he's Jeff Goldblum. He kind of steals the show. Um, goth Kate Blanchett turns out to be the unlikeliest pin-up you'll ever, uh, ever encounter as a Marvel villain. Also, she does actually kind of break the Marvel villain and curse to an extent she does seem to have an actual personality which is something that especially in the case of Thor outside of Loki the villains never really had so th- this is not another Malekith, put it that way. I did think you would be. Yeah, this is this is a villain with an actual personality. Um, there are cameos that work. There's no cameos that don't work, actually, is probably the best way to say that. Um, and I don't mean cameos from characters you know. I mean cam- characters, uh, cameos from just new characters. Things like that. They do all work. Um... Coming away from it, I would say it's a great setup for Thor going forward, Avengers wise. There's uh, not so much, you know, shifting of the plates so much as he is repositioning your pieces. I'm good with that. And uh, it might actually be the best depiction of the Hulk we've ever had in a film. Because obviously, I say I'm being as vague as I can with all of this. If you've seen a trailer, you kind of know where I'm going with it anyway. But uh, yeah, best depiction of the Hulk. Uh, Mark Ruffalo gets some some great moments as well. (laughs) And... uh, and yeah, I mean, I will. It's great. It is yeah. all around fun. It is a wild ride. It's absolutely the wild ride that you expect it to be, and then some. Um, the uh, uh, the new the new female lead, by the way, uh, Valkyrie. Yeah, Tessa Thompson. Tessa Thompson, love her. Yeah, absolutely love her. And please don't let this be another case of there not being a female action figure, because if they sold this action figure, yeah, I thought she's amazing. This one sells. Mm. And, yeah, don't get me wrong, you can merchandise the hell out of this film. Yeah. <laughs> really good. Just the number of Gladiator Hulk toys you could sell from this. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I never thought I'd say this about a Thor movie either. I, uh, I I really like the soundtrack. So Yes. Yes, I'll go with that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so there's, there's a lot in there. As a, The fan in me was very happy. The comic book fan in me was also very happy. The general cinema goer in me was very happy yeah. uh, it is the longest one of these movies by the way one of the four movies I mean mm. by about 20 minutes I think oh. um, but it but it's, but it's still not over the long doesn't it? feel it. it's yeah. two, two hours ten yeah that's, didn't, that's the kind of length I want yeah. didn't feel it in the slightest I loved the hell out of it Good. And I can't wait to see it again. I can't wait to see it on Tuesday. I really, seen really it. can't wait. I've got my ticket booked for that. That's why we're reviewing it this week, by the way, is because it's out Tuesday, and if we wait till next Friday, you've all seen it, so what's the point? And also, the embargo has dropped by the time you hear this. Because <clears> so. people want you to know about it. Yes, we want to spread the <laughs> yeah. word. We're worried you might not have heard there's a new Thor movie out. But Is that is, is Thor your phone wallpaper at the minute, by the way? I keep meaning to ask. Uh, it is, but... Um, it's, it's the Jeff Goldblum version. Yeah, ev- ev- every character is Goldblum. Oh, okay. <laughs> has, has someone done a Nicolas Cage one yet? I'm sure they will have. I'm sure they will have. It's, you know, I found it on the internet, so I'm sure that you can find that. <laughs> I'm sure you will. So, um, we need to pick a film of the week. Well, I ain't seen any, so do what you want. So, <laughs> that's fair enough. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I've got two films this week. I love Thor Ragnarok. I, I can't wait mm. to see it again. It was a great ride. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Um, I will recommend as well a film we're going to talk about in the podcast extras, uh, Secret Superstar, which is a Bollywood film, but it has got crossover potential. I think everyone who can see it should see it. It's really great and really charming, and everyone should see it. But Thor Ragnarok, it's such a wild ride. It's so good. Mm. And yeah, I mean, we're going to, I can't wait till you've seen it. I really can't. We're going to have so many great conversations about that. Not to go all Donald Trump on you. That's going to be just the best conversations. Best. Uh, um, so, <laughs> so uh, what have we got next week? Next week, some interesting stuff uh, next week. We've, we've got, got uh, loads of things. I mean, we've we've got Geostorm. Oh, yes, yes. We're going to review Geostorm. We're going to review Geostorm a week let's, late. Let's, let's not bury the lead. 
we're going to do Yeah, we're going to do Geostorm because they weren't press showing it. They refused to show it to the press. I, I have no idea why. No, 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 no clue. Um, so we're going to review it next week because we're just like that. Um, Jigsaw is out next week as well. Look forward to it. Absolutely looking forward yeah, to that. Saw is it's, it's Saw being fun. And that's not being press shown either, but we're going to reposition things so we can actually review it. Um, Andy Serkis's film Breathe is next week. Yes. Okay, that's absolutely... And Andrew Garfield, uh, Claire Foy. Yeah, but I feel like because he's in a wheelchair and can't move for most of it, that might be what attracted Andy Serkis, who turns up and says, act with your face. Come on, you can do well, it. Well, he's, he's done it because apparently his mum used to work with um, like children who had like cystic fibrosis and all right, all those right. kind of conditions, so that's why he kind of gravitates towards it, so it's very admirable. I, yeah, so just... shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just think Andy Serkis and movement, you're never getting away from that. Yeah. Uh, Call <laughs> Me By Your Name is next week. Yeah, the film we... Uh, uh, have got, been talked about. We all, we've got to talk about it in the podcast extras, but uh, uh, we've also got Grace Jones, Bloodlight and Barney. I know you do. I'm surprised by this. I yeah. never figured you was a Grace Jones fan. If I was a drag artist, my name would be Case Jones. Oh, man. Hmm. Well, hang on. <laughs> Couldn't you just be a guy who's Casey Jones? No. Like TMNT? Because then, then I, I, I wouldn't be dressed up like Grace Jones. No, no wanna that's be. true. That's true. Uh, the Shining is being reissued next oh, week yeah, as well. That? Mm, that's this... Uh, I don't know. Some lunatic guy made this movie. Apparently, he's a bit of a, bit of a sh- uh, you know, perfectionist. <laughs> yeah. and it's about... It, it's about... Like, it's the right things. It's about over hotel over. management. Ah, yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard-hitting tale about It is a perils. documentary about oh. travel and tourism. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's about event planning and hotel management. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, Perfect Blue is being reissued next week as well. The 19, uh, 1998 uh, anime so, movie. Yeah. And also, go on. We've got Geostorm. We've got Geostorm as well. We can't <laughs> get Geostorm. I mean, I, I didn't mention it a minute ago, but we've got Geostorm. Control the weather. Control the world. <laughs> is that the tagline? <laughs> that's the tagline. <laughs> How did I know that would grab you, sir? <laughs> Andy Garcia is a president. I mean, I know, I I'm, know. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna queue up for my ticket right now. <laughs> I, I can't wait. I absolutely can't wait. Hasn't this got Jim Stur- oh, it's got Gerard Butler as a satellite engineer. Yeah. That's who you get. <laughs> That's who you get, man. Do you see what you get when you mess <laughs> with, with the, the warrior? <laughs> <laughs> with the weather in this case. With yeah. the weather. Do you see what you get, Gerard? But, okay, so we've got all those to come and more next week off screen. Uh, don't forget, check out the podcast edition for more exciting goodies after the end credits. Uh, go on to onscreenfilm.com for the competitions, loads of swag, merchandise packs, DVDs, Blu-rays, novels, uh, all of that on there. In the meanwhile, this has been a candy store production for On Screen. I've been Van Cotton. I've been a little pony. And we'll be back. Just show me the way to get out of here and I'll be on my way. You've been listening to Off Screen. For more news and reviews, visit onscreenfilm.com. Okay, cut. That's I'd usually play guitar at this bit, but my guitar's downstairs. So, hi. <laughs> hi. Podcast extras, everybody. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, um, give me right some now. news then, Mr. Allen. What we got? Do you like Cher? Do I like Cher? Yeah. She won an Oscar and he's a congressman. <laughs> Good, Good night. night. Uh, <laughs> dear. Cher is also an actress as well as being a uh, singer of it, songs. Singer in air quotes, presumably. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not here to defend Cher. <laughs> I'm far too retired for that. I do like mermaids. I'll be I honest. Like, I, do, I do I like, like mermaids. mermaids. Yeah. I like the Moonstruck, but that's more for Nick Cage. Of course. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. So what's she doing now? Uh, she's joined the cast of Mamma Mia. Here we go again, which is the sequel to Mamma Mia. Exclamation. Mark. Also, I love that the subtitle is what pretty much most of the critics will be saying as they walk into the screen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And everyone's boyfriend who's forced to go and it's, see it. He's just missing, uh, ugh, here yeah. we go again. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you... I've never seen the first one. Have you never? I feel like I'm one of, like, maybe five people who have not seen the first one. Can I just put, save you some suspense and tell you that Pierce Brosnan is an absolutely atrocious singer? I've heard that. I've heard that Silence Guards God just has the time of his life. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Colin Firth is just, he's always having a ball, isn't he? When's, when's old Firthy not enjoying himself? Yeah. But, uh, I can't think of it. He's, yeah, he's having a good time. So, hang on, am I right in thinking, isn't Mamma Mia, here we go again, is that not the one, haven't we got Lily James playing Lily James young... is playing young Mel Streep, right. but Mel Streep is also going to be in it playing Mel Streep. Apparently, <laughs> they're, they're, God, they're Godfather-2-ing yeah. this one, I think. <laughs> yeah, because when you think Godfather, you think, yeah. you think Abba. Yeah, yeah. totally, yeah, yeah. I was Absolutely. Thought, yeah. Godfather, great movie and all, yeah. needed more disco. Needed more Bjorn. <laughs> needed more Benny and Bjorn. That's what, that's what you need. <laughs> and Agatha, and who's the other one? Who's the other A? There's Agatha and... Oh, in, in, in ABBA? Yeah. Alphonse. 
Is it Alphonse? Of course it's Alphonse. Yeah. It totally is. It absolutely is. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's Benny Bjorn. Yeah. What, what, Benny what Bjorn, is, Agatha. Is I don't know the other one. Annika? I really don't. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, well, look me so. <laughs> give, give me a, a review and I'll uh, I'll look up the, the lineage of, of Anna. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk about, uh, this is a rarity for us. We're going to talk about a Bollywood movie. Shut front door. I know. They actually pressured one for a change. Imagine that. I like a Bollywood. I like a good Bollywood film. So this is Secret Superstar. And I'm going to give you the plot as written on IMDb because it just amuses me. This is the plot (coughs) according to IMDb. The film revolves around the life of a child who aspires to be a singer. That, right. That, that's, okay. That's to very the, broad, to the point, to the point yeah. isn't it? Uh, we haven't got a clip because it is all in its own native tongue. And uh, right, so this is produced by Amir Khan. Right. Okay. As in, you know, Bollywood royalty, and he does also turn up in the film in a supporting role. Uh, the general gist is, you've got a young girl um, whose name is Insia or Insu, as she's called by her mother. She has an abusive father, an enabling mother, a sort of young toddler brother who's not really consequential, and basically she aspires to to be, be a, a singer and go on the show, The Singing Idol. Which looks right. an awful lot like a show that we have uh, over here as well, mm. which I think is still called The Singing Idol. But, uh, yeah, so um, she becomes a YouTube sensation when she gets a laptop from her mother. Her mother uh, buys her a laptop against her father's wishes, and uh, she basically dons the burqa, plays a guitar, plays a song that she herself has written, and becomes a viral sensation. And over the course of, like, two or three songs, she's in the tens of millions of views, and everybody in the land wants to know who is the secret superstar. And also... That's the name of the film. I know, I know. Do you love it when they do that? I do. I, we always clap, don't we? When we say the title <laughs> of the golf film. golf clap, golf clap. <laughs> uh, yeah, but of course, obviously, with her fame comes this idea that she's living a double life, comes the pursuit of one's dreams, etc. Um, and then, of course, then you've got Amir Khan as well, who turns up as this sort of Simon Cowell figure, <laughs> but like a sort of amphetamine-addled version of <laughs> one. I mean, I'll tell you something. Uh, what did we say? He is 52? I think he is. Right about, yeah. If you or I looked like him at 52, we, we'd be very lucky. Mm. I mean, he looked great in this movie. The dude's buff as hell anyway. Mm. But uh, he's, he's looking good in there with the frosted tips and the, the 90s outfits. I'll be honest, I was quite jealous the entire way through. Um, but the real find here is uh, <clears throat> uh, Zyra Wasim, who plays uh, in Seer, um, is she's, she's terrific. She's a real find. I don't know what she's done before. I mean, she's really young. And she's just got this charming presence. But the whole film, which is written and directed by uh, uh, Avit Chandam, mm. uh, who, again, whose work I don't particularly know. I'm not down on my Bollywood. I'm sorry. We don't get shown an awful We don't. So, yeah, it's a shame, because I, yeah. I, would, I would like to see more. I would like to see I've more. Seen, I've seen a fair few, yeah. but um, I, w- I would like to watch Remember that one we reviewed was it last year, Fan? Oh, that was great. That was really good. The show yeah. at Khan. And then as I discovered, SRK is what you're supposed to call it. There's a ball it. I saw a couple of years ago called uh, Rowdy Vittor, which Rowdy. I really, really liked. I never saw I, I saw the marketing for yeah, it. Yeah, it was an amazing trailer. The guy was like, don't angry me. I was like, his like, catchphrase he said to people. <sighs> I, I really, really, really wanted to see To Whom 3 in IMAX. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, I, I miss it in IMAX, but it's, it's great. Just never appeared in IMAX, and I really wanted to. That's one of my favourite trailers ever. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so uh, Mm, Secret Superstar, it is charming, it is sweet, it is really, really, really good. It will absolutely win you over. Um, It's it's one of those films that if you get the opportunity to see, you absolutely should. And it's Diwali, isn't it, at the moment? Is it, it coming is. up? But I, I, I believe it is coming up. And this is the release they've imminent. timed for it. Yeah, it's usually one really big Bollywood mm. release. And I can understand why this has such crossover potential. I feel like if you could get a mainstream British audience to sort of accidentally see it, you would really win them over. There's mm. a lot of crossover here. It's really good. The way they handle the social networking side and YouTube and stuff like that, in a weird way, hasn't actually been done <clears throat> in a Western film yet. So I, I kind of thought that was ahead of the curve in one sense. But uh, no, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought the performances, Zyra Wasim, uh, Maya Vish, who plays her mother, great performances. 
really loved it end to end. I was charmed by it. I was heartbroken by it at times. Flared my daddy <laughs> issues right up sometimes, I tell you. But, you'll laugh, uh, you'll cry, you'll hurl. <laughs> you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll hurl. And you'll do it with subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll read a bit. <laughs> exactly, exactly the case. If you ever have to change your contact lenses, by the way, don't see this movie first. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so uh, over to you for a bit of news. What we got? Um, Conrad Vernon, who directed Sausage Party, which I liked very much because there's not enough films where there's a big food orgy at the end. No, 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 there really there aren't. No, most I, most films are missing that, in my opinion. I mean, I'll be honest. I saw My Little Pony this week, and I thought at the end, could have done with a big food orgy. <laughs> just sometimes you just need a I'm, big. I'm, food I'm orgy. glad that you just talk about the food orgy, and not. <laughs> Some kind of like equine <laughs> kink fest. It's not what we need. It's not. It's not brony porn. No, it's no. <laughs> it's not brony porn. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nay, sir. I said nay. Oh my god. <laughs> we are but men. <laughs> uh. He's uh. going to direct a animated uh, Adams Family film, which I am in favour of. You're in favour of. Yeah, okay. I am. Yeah. Oh, are fair. you? Are you not? Um, I think because that hoax has been going around like Facebook for so long now about the uh, the Oscar Isaac, Ava Green... Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll never things. get that, but I would love that to happen. That is kind of the dream, isn't it? But you know Absolutely, what? Yeah. If we're going to have to if we're gonna have to have something else in the meanwhile, then I'll take a, I'll take an, ad, an animated Adam's Family, fine. Yeah, um, I'd say that. I think it's, it's a fun enough property, and like it's, it's a really good family-friendly... Thing. I think with it being animated, there's right. more chance as well of getting a really, really good cast, a good, uh, great oh, yeah, bit of casting, regardless of how they physically look in the role. I mean, though he does so. look like he could be Gomez. I mean, Oscar would be amazing just voicing Gomez. I think so. Although, if it's in animated form, just pointing out there, we could get Antonio Banderas. We could. Which is kind of the dream. We could, yeah. Yeah. I miss Raul Julia. I do miss Raul Julia. He's so good in the Adam Sandler movies. So good. He's so he just he he is the definition of perfect precision casting. Oh, absolutely. He and Jordan yeah. Houston both. Yeah. In fact, pretty much every one of the Adam Sandler actual family members. It's bizarre, isn't it? Because you would think like Christopher Lloyd. I know. You don't see that man and just think, oh, that's Uncle Fester. But would like, you Would you argue he was the biggest star out of them? That uh, he was the biggest mainstream star. Do you think? Probably, I I would guess I would guess mainstream, yeah, yeah. But obviously, Angela Houston comes from that lineage, and she would have already won an Oscar at that point as well. Of the so. Chesapeake Houstons, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of uh, West Chester Houston, yes. she comes from a famous Houston. She does. Lineage. She does come from famous Doc, yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But um, I think obviously because of Doc Brown and because of Foo Fighters and yeah. Rabbit, amongst many others. A I taxi. Think. I can never forget taxi. A taxi. I yeah, love man. Taxi. Like, Christopher Lloyd has uh, lived a life, hasn't he? He is a man for all seasons, yeah. is he not? Well, you look at him, you don't... You just think, oh, that's a, he's, he's very tall. There's no way he's faster. Uh, he, he is faster, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's incredible. Uh, oh, well, so fantasy casting, please, to the Twitter feed. Who would you get yeah. to voice an animated Adams Family? I'd be very interested to see what people come up with on that. As would I. I'm, I'm down with that. I'm I, down think, with I think that's good. Okay, let me talk about uh, Dina then, real mm-hmm. quick. Which uh, stars Dina as Dina... In Dina, as we're told <laughs> on the poster. In a film written by Dina, and the soundtrack by Dina. No, even kidding. That actually is the poster. Dina is Dina in Dina. That's cool. That, that actually, look, right there, says it right let me Let me have a look at this Dina. <laughs> that is Dina. That, that there, that, 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 is, that, that is Dina. Mm. So this is a documentary um, about... Uh, this is a, a documentary that also sort of doubles as a rom-com. And it is about uh, Dina Bruno. She is a 49-year-old uh, woman who decides to move her boyfriend into... Uh, move her boyfriend, now fiancé, into her home for the first time. And it's basically how they go from having just dated to actually living together mm. and the run-up to their mm. wedding and the actual wedding itself. Um, as he moves in, there quickly ar- arises a sort of issue between them, which is... Although he's verbally affectionate to her, he acknowledges that he is affectionate, for instance, I mean, he just says, I feel affectionately towards you. <laughs> he's not really big with the actual, uh, the expression of that. He's not big with actually making her feel 
cared for and loved. And this starts to form a rift between them, and it's something that she finds herself dealing with in the run-up to the wedding. Uh, and, of course, in the meanwhile, you've also got all the usual wedding hoopla, you know, all the usual arrangements and things. <laughs> do, love, do love a hoopla. And you do love a hoopla. Yes. A shindig, you know, a little bit of dig, a little bit of... Oh, no, hoot nanny, <laughs> a little bit of hoot hold on nanny. That's yeah. the line, isn't it? And, uh, and, of course, there is the issue as well. They both seem to have Asperger's. Mm. Which, in brilliant American fashion, is referred to continuously as Asperger's. Asperger's yeah, I mean yeah. South Park. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I tell you, what, we've we've got a clip, and this is uh, when Dina's having one of her uh, act- one of and one of her meltdowns over the stress of running up to this wedding. I don't know why I'm being such a baby about it. It's all right, sweetheart. Don't think I about it. I shouldn't be. It's just I shouldn't be. And I'm sorry because you don't need this because it's like I'm a selfish person. You're not selfish, sweetheart. It's okay. I just. Um, sometimes I get frustrated because I know you try really hard, but sometimes I just get frustrated. This should help. Listen. Just listen. So that's Scott, the fiancé there, mm. right? And his, his attempt to... Uh, I can't remember what the song actually is that he plays. Some 80s pop song that winds up being used at the wedding as well. And uh, it, one of those sort of naff little things that just, it has this nerdy quality to it. The whole film does have a sort of a charm to it, but there is a sort of an ambivalence to it all as well. And I think it is a, there's a sort of distance applied by the, by the filmmakers, yeah. by uh, Antonio Santini and... Hang on. Antonio Santini and... Uh, Dan Sickles, um, there is a sort of a distance applied by them, and I, I do feel like their need to not be too invasive has left something of a barrier for the audience and the character. And the problem is that Dina herself is is such a character that you you kind of need to be closer to her to really to, to bask in there. And the film does hold you at arm's length, as it were. Um, it's not unenjoyable. There are some quite funny moments in it, and there's a lot there's a lot of charm in there, but. Right. It is a very kind of uh, bleached out kind of a, you know, um, almost a sort of boilerplate indie documentary feel to it that at the same time jars with the fact that it effectively plays as a rom-com mm. and then at the same time also plays as this sort of overcoming adversity within the adversity kind of an angle. Um I didn't dislike it. I did, I did quite... I, found, I say I found it quite charming, and I, I found the subjects of it quite charming, especially Dina herself. Um, but I just... It's, there's not really any mainstream appeal in it. And I think an art house crowd, I, I think, would, again, feel that distance and feel that barrier, hmm. which is a shame. But uh, Shame. Shame, shame, shame. We, so, we need the shame bell. We do need the shame bell, don't shame. we? Shame. <laughs> I remember using that on you once, didn't I? Uh, Digitally. Yeah, but But, I forget why. uh, You went to Cineworld for the first time in two or three years, I think. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Was it C Rogue One? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, the things you'll do for Star Wars. I know. So (laughs) over to you for the news, sir. What you got for me? Uh, a man by the name of Mike Vukadinovich. Vukadinovich. Why do I know Vukadinovich? Because he is the latest writer to sign on to write a screenplay for Beetlejuice 2. Is it still Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian? I need um, to know this. I don't think it is. You know this. Okay. <laughs> Must we go tropical? Must we go tropical? That was always the quote, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Must, we Must go we go tropical? tropical? <laughs> Haven't we said all we need to say with Beetlejuice? <laughs> uh, yeah, he is the latest person. And apparently it's, it's really ramping up steam because Tim Burton and uh, Mark Keaton are currently working together on Dumbo. Oh, of course and they remember, are, yes. They're good buddies. Yeah, and, uh, funny how that works. <laughs> yeah, I've been obviously talking about this, so yeah, it may actually happen. I think it'd be good. Yeah, I think it's one of those things. Well, once you've had Blade Runner, which is this this you know decades later sequel that's actually worked actually out great. for a you change. Feel yeah, all right about it. You think? But, but, Let's try it again. I think because of that makeup as well. Yeah. It, do, it doesn't matter if Mark Keaton's like 61. It really doesn't, does it? It could yeah. just literally be Beetlejuice and another family, couldn't it, in one sense? Absolutely, yeah. Like, I feel like they could get away with that. They don't have to get Winona Ryder and Gina Davis and Ali Baldwin you back. You could maybe get, like, Winona Ryder back. I feel like she'd sign up for it. And Oh, oh hang on. Winona Ryder is now the mum. Yeah, it's her that's family what I'm in a new house. There yeah. we are. That's, that. that's what you do. I'll go with that. Surely that must be the angle that they've gone in for. In Hawaii. Because the thing about getting Junior Davis and Alec Baldwin back, I, they they wouldn't age, would they? But yet have aged in real life because they are humans. Yeah. I mean, Alec Baldwin literally looks like a different human. Alec Baldwin yes, looks he does. more like Daniel Baldwin now. Yeah, but uh, but still a handsome version. Of oh, oh, yeah, yeah, like a much, yeah. much sexier version he's of got, Danny Baldwin. He's got that, like, Baldwin neck that we all have. Do you know I, what I mean? Where it's... 
I watched the, the old, Shadow look a bit like the dad from uh, the show uh, Dinosaurs. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but Alec, well, the Alec Daniel thing, I watched The Shadow this morning. You know how his face changes when he's in the costume? Mm. Like they have the sort of the prosthetic effects to make him look like he's disguising himself. Yeah. Right. That fake face looks like Daniel Baldwin. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Little it's bit. so weird. Yeah. But uh, to the extent you can't think, wouldn't it have been cheaper to just get Daniel Baldwin at that point to just do think. those scenes? Yeah. But never mind. Yeah, what we got next, then? I have news. Oh, you've got news. Okay, go news. What we got? Have I got news? I did have news. Have you got Why news don't for you me? Give me... <laughs> I'm just giving you some news, you <laughs> greedy news ear. <laughs> I'm a know. news whore. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, shall you, I do a review? You just live for news. Uh, do a review, and I'll get more news, and that's what we'll do. Okay, so uh, <laughs> shall we talk about Earth or One Amazing Day? <laughs> Why not? Couldn't stop me talking about it. <laughs> okay, I saw this. I couldn't stop you, really. <laughs> yes. Okay, we're clearly too giddy for this. <laughs> right, okay, okay. Um, so, Earth One Amazing Day, which is the mm. first uh, theatrical effort from the people behind uh, the BBC's Planet Earth series. And, yes. you know, that, a.k.a. that box set that everyone's dad got in Christmas 2009. 2009. Looks amazing, though. Looks brilliant. Looks brilliant. Mm. Guess what? The movie looks brilliant as well. So, general gist this time around is what you, you general get... Gist. General gist. General yeah. gist, um, What we get this time around is literally one day of planet Earth. Oh. And it follows its different species and how they function over the course of a 24-hour period. Humans are actually included as well, incidentally. And it is all narrated by Sir Robert of Redford. No way. Yep. That that caramel those caramel pipes are back. <laughs> yeah. Salted caramel pipes, they're back. Yeah. And uh, and he's bringing some humor to it. And I'll tell you what, we've got a clip and that's going to set the tone rather nicely for you. Earth. Our home. The lucky planet. The magical dance of earth and sun. The vital ingredient for life itself. planet is unique. One day spent here is the most amazing thing in the whole universe. See, doesn't it sound just charming and captivating? Mm. It does a bit. That's it really that. does. It's when you get right after. Um, apparently in different regions, Jackie Chan narrates it, according to IMDb. But, uh, yeah, so, anyway, um, I would imagine Jackie Chan to be as funny as uh, Robert Redford is at times here, because he just has a bit of a wry wit to it all. Yeah. And it does feel, actually, at times, like they've given him the script, and he's just, he's going off the reservation a little bit. He's, he's, he's taking a detour, throwing some quips of his own. Um, but it is, it's it's kind of up to the standard of, you know, of the series lineage, really. It's got the, it's got the grand visuals. It's, uh, you, you'll see this in Costco on a million 4K TV demonstrations for years to come. Oh, but those TVs. I know. Oh, so much. I know. I just, I really want I the 85-inch one. never be able to afford one. No, no, none of us ever will, but only about four grand. <laughs> Yeah. Jeez. I think about four uh, grand. crazy. But, uh, yeah, so um, great, great visuals. Um, I don't know if you could tell from the clip, by the way, as well, really amazing score to this uh, by Alex Hefez, whose work I'm not, again, not familiar with. Um, but I did. I, I was genuinely taken in by it. The way that they've laid it out, which is to give it the the it is one day kind of thing, and it does go through morning, you know, dawn, morning, lunchtime, kind of etc. Mm. And it does work. It does actually give it a sort of a weird narrative through it, and it does play. And it is the kind of thing that you will want on Blu-ray, even though you might not watch it over and over. But you will want to show off your new telly when you can afford it. Mm. So you know, get saving. Uh, I don't have money. I'll never have money for that. <laughs> no, I never yeah. will. Okay, so over to you for one piece of news, and then I'm going to give you a film that's just so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see that film. <laughs> you know and what it is, too. You don't know what we're talking about, so... Ha. Huh. <laughs> but we have a microphone, and you don't. <laughs> you so don't. you will listen yeah. to every damn thing we have to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in the news, what do we have, sir? So we know that Dan Lewis was going to make in his final... Well, he says his final ever uh, uh, performance in uh, a film directed by PTA. By PTA. Yes. Paul Is Thomas it Anderson? No, it's Paul W.S. Anderson. Never confuse your Paul Anderson. Never. No, 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 no. no. As a fan of the Resident Evil <laughs> series, I could never do that to PTA. Hmm. Uh, and we thought it was going to be called The Phantom Thread. And now it's been confirmed. It's The Phantom Thread? It is The Phantom Thread. 
Okay. Yeah. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Thread. <laughs> <laughs> is this is this somebody this make the, up a poster? <laughs> this is the last film before Daniel Day Lewis resigns himself to that life of pursuing his his secret passion of street dancing. Well, he's what he's going to be tied for. He's going to become a dressmaker. I know because of this because movie, of, right? Yeah. This is so weird. Isn't it coming out on Christmas as well this year? Yes. That's it's actually on Christmas Day, isn't it? I believe so. Well, yeah. in the UK, it'd be Boxing Day. But yeah, we don't gonna... release films on Christmas Day, do we? No, we we release films on Boxing Day. Yeah, but in the US, they do actually put them out on. Yeah, I think we've had some uh, Bollywood releases on yeah. Christmas Day, but obviously it depends on the cinema and um, whatever. Uh, Sydney World in Sheffield isn't open on Christmas Day, is it? No, it's one day of a year where it's closed. Ah, okay, I just thought I'd ask. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Daniel Day-Lewis, uh, I don't know who else is in this, actually. I've they've found. not said. They've not said. Oh, okay. which, which is crazy, really. You have no idea who else is in this. Maybe it's, it's literally just him. But yeah, that's the thing. No other director besides Paul Thomas Anderson could pull that off, though. I'd... That'd be great. I would love it. It was just him. And there's like, there's one photo of him walking in, <laughs> walking down like, the street, like a cemetery. <laughs> yeah. I just want it to be him, like talking to like fashion ghosts. I could absolutely do that. It's all they're all CG. They're all CG. Side note: Fashion Ghosts would have been a way better title. <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis in Fashion Ghosts. Yeah, yes. I'm in. I'm in. A Paul Thomas Anderson uh, picture. Yeah, totally. A, a PTA joint. <laughs> okay, um, mm. Ball and Cell Park '99. I really want to see it because it's the guy that did Bone Tomahawk. Bone Tomahawk. Right. Okay. So, um, which I love. I'll give you the plot first. And then we'll get to what, why this is... Vince Vaughn in a jail. It is Vince Vaughn in a jail. That's right. Vince Vaughn doesn't get to the jail for about 40 minutes, though. Huh. Okay. This film is 133 minutes long. That's good. Right. You're not going to feel it. That's the impressive part. You don't feel that. So the idea is, he's uh, he works for a car impound company. He's a skinhead. He's got a big tattooed cross on the back of his head. He he seems to be a little... There's the implication that he might have been a bit of a, a sort of extreme figure, a thug in previous times, though that's not really fleshed out. He does seem to have connections with criminal, you know, with the criminal world, though. Uh, namely through a friend named Gil, played by Mark Bluecast from Buffy. Remember him? Huh. Yeah. Riley Finn. <laughs> anyway, uh, and also that dude got buff. Like, really buff. Like, side shaved haircut and buff now. Good for him. Okay, so Vince Vaughn gets laid off from his job and he decides to. He gets told the same day as well that uh, his, his wife is pregnant. His wife is, uh, is it Jennifer Carpenter from Dexter? Yes. Right. So he decides, well, we can't go on like this. We need, to, we need income then because mm. you're not going to be able to work. So. He goes, and he goes to his friend Gil and says, I'll run drugs for you. And, of course, as you'd imagine, one of these jobs quickly goes bad. And he winds up uh, making enemies with the would-be business partners and going down for the crime. Um, he gets sentenced to a very harsh, uh, harsh uh, sentence time for it, gets sent to a medium security prison, and isn't there five minutes before he gets told, well... Um, I represent the people that you've annoyed. Uh, we've got your pregnant wife. We happen to have an abortionist who has perfected the technique of removing a baby's limbs in the womb. Uh, yeah, yeah, your reaction is absolutely... Yeah, that's it. And what? Yeah. They've got a Chinese abortionist who will go in and take off the baby's limbs in the womb and they will then deliver them to Vince Vaughn. And this is not stated as an exaggeration. It's an actual thing they go into at length. And the only way this is not going to happen is if you get yourself transferred to the maximum security prison down the road and kill a guy for us. Here's a clip. How's my lift stuff? Man principal. Relinquish it now. You know the difference between right or wrong? And you have a moral compass. I knew before you told me that you got an American flag in your home, you probably got more than one. You're a patriot. There is a great cast in here, as I can say. You've got uh, Vince Vaughn, you've got... Uh, well, I mean, I'm saying Vince Vaughn is great, incidentally, off, straight off the bat. Vince Vaughn is great in this. Yeah, he's genuinely great in this. Um, supporting cast, Jennifer Carpenter, uh, Mark Blucas, as I say. And then, <laughs> out of nowhere, <laughs> Don Johnson turns up. Yes. Right. Don Johnson turns up as well and signifies a, a great trick here, which turns out to be the trick of Bone Tomahawk. It turns out this is S. Craig Zahler's shtick. The whole thing of... I, it, get, it, just get an old guy. Right. I think his, his shtick is, <coughs> if, his favourite movie must be from Dusk Till Dawn. He likes that bait and switch off from Dusk Till Dawn, which mm. is, I will make you watch one movie 
for a certain amount of time, and then I'm going to seg you into a different movie, and I'm going to see how long it takes you to notice. And Bone Time Walk obviously famously did that. Uh, this does a very similar thing. I'm not going to tell you in which direction, but it, you, you kind of realise when you get to Don Johnson, you're like, okay, that happened. Clever boy. And I really respect it for that. And a good part of it is the performance of Vince Vaughn, which is so grounded and so gritty in that way that uh, Kurt Russell was in Bone Tomahawk. Mm. He was the anchor to it all, and it does really work. Um, the cinematography of it is lavish. It is, at the same time, very real, very immersive. Um, the, 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 the scale that he's gone into with these respective prisons and the way that he contrasts them with certain visual trickery is really clever. Um, the, the first prison, for instance, is heavily concentrated on, on painted breeze blocks, whereas the next prison just looks like this kind of medieval torture room. It is absolutely gorgeous as a film in all the weirdest, wrongest possible ways. And at the centre of it all is Vince Vaughn trying to assert himself unexpectedly as a great actor. And you think, oh, yeah, because you once were a genuinely qualified Mm. star. And at some point along the way, you did enough R-rated comedies that we forgot that. (laughs) And, okay... I'm back now. I'll 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 give Vince Vaughn the time of day again. That's absolutely fine. We're going back to Swingers Vaughn now and less Couples Retreat Vaughn, which I'm good <laughs> because of, do you even remember a, a Couples Retreat? Of course I do. I hated that movie so much. I, mean, I never saw it. But then again, I got taste. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very true, very true. Uh, but no, um, I do really recommend uh, Brawl and Soulbot 99. Uh, I don't think it's as groundbreaking a film as Bone Tomahawk is, but I think uh, that was that film was an absolute... That was a, a calling card out of nowhere. That was, hey, I'm S. Craig Zala, this is what I can do. I do, though, maintain he is one of the most interesting directors around. Do you know what his next film's called? Go on. Dragged Across Concrete. Is that the one with Mel Gibson? Yeah. You've told me about that. Is that that's Vince Vaughn as well, isn't it? Yeah, whether, like... Cops, they're like partners. I mean, he's got my money. That's all I need to know. <laughs> that, if, that, if that man got this performance out of Vince Vaughn, I mean, I'll be honest, I saw the poster, which is this one here, and I just thought, oh, so it's like an American History X kind of thing. Yeah. And it's not, though, actually. Not really. it's, it's, it's a lot more than that. It's, I, I, genu- I actually came away actually genuinely respecting the film. Mm. Um, and for a film called Brawl on, in Cell Block 99, because shouldn't it be on Cell Block 99? Yeah. I keep thinking it's on, but no, it's, it's in. Well, I guess... But, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, it, it is rated 18, by the way, for damn good reason. It is a very extreme movie at times. It is a movie as well that treats violence in absolutely the correct way, which is simply to say, we're not going to over-glamorise it, we're just going to take you to the absolute extreme of it. <laughs> uh, but never in a, a, a particularly showy way, which I quite like about it. Um, yeah, genuinely loved it. Uh, we'll merrily watch it again. In fact, I, I'll double bill this with Bone Tomahawk. Very different films, but just for S. Craig Zala. watch it. Um, isn't he doing the Puppet Masters remake? We uh, said that a while ago. Yes, a while ago we said that, so I don't know whether that's still going to happen. I hope it is. Yeah, it's... that's cool. But, I don't know, it sounds like these uh, just original projects if that's, are good as well. If that's his one franchise effort, then I'm on board, because yeah. it's such a wacky one. But, uh, yeah, uh, definitely check it out. I think you'd really love it. Yeah, can't but, wait. Uh, okay, give me one last piece of film news then before we go to the Moment of Cage. Cool, so there was a film coming out called uh, Call Me By Your Name. Which we're reviewing next week. Yes, we yes. are. Oh, imagine that. Imagine like, that. We are tying it all together because we are professionals. Like a Christopher Nolan movie. All into- I know, <laughs> yes. I've actually got like things like written all over my body. Like the next <laughs> <laughs> It's just like Army Hammer's name a bunch of times. That's what it is, clearly. So yeah, he saw uh, Army Hammer, um, an actor called uh, Timothy Chalamet, who's getting really, really good notices for yeah, this he is. film. Yeah, yeah, like loads of people saying, this is a kid to watch. Michael so Stuhlbarg is in it, who obviously you're you're in always, love with Michael Stuhlbarg. Well, he's him. always great. He's one of those actors that makes a film just like like fifteen percent better. <laughs> this is a dude who got a Marvel movie when no one knew who he was yet. So you know, that's fair. And he's talking about loads of people knew who he was. About <clears throat> times in Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange was last year. He, I only knew him for like one film before that. Yeah, yeah, that was the is it Serious Man. Uh, 
Yes. I knew him for like that, and that was it. And I'm like, oh, look, I, it's a I used to have manga. to think about a film because I, I never want to say um, a single man because it came out at like the same time. Yeah, yeah. Used to get confused. But is, and that's the Colin Firth one, isn't it? Yes. Single man is Colin Firth. Serious Max man Max is. Max Zuberg is in that. He's in Hugo. He's in Men in Black Three. He's in loads of films. Is he in Men? In, oh, he is in Men in Black Three, isn't mm. he? He's the little psychic dude. Yes, he is. Yeah, quite a yeah. Uh, pivotal role in that. Oh, I forgot. Right, so uh, the director of uh, Colin by Name says that he's planning on doing a sequel that's, to this film, which what, is what's his name, Cass? Is it? Uh, because <laughs> we, we, we planned this one out <laughs> go on give well, it a let, stab let, let me find it I'm guessing too I don't know so so uh, his name is Luca Guadagnino okay I'm t- I'll take it I'll take Luca it Luca Guadagnino Guad- I'm I'd go, I'll, I'm, I'll go with Guadagnino I'll take that Guadagnino yeah, yeah. I'll go with he's, Guadagnino he's planning uh, to make a sequel that's going to be set seven years after the events of the first one do you think he'll call it Call Me By My Name maybe Ooh. yeah Ooh. Yeah. I did. I did read that uh, there is a novel that the novel uh, has an ending that the film doesn't include, like a coda. Mm. The novel has apparently has a coda set many years later, uh, and apparently he wants to ignore that. That he wants to do his own thing for a sequel. He wants mm. to give them alternative futures. Which mm. well, I'm really looking forward to the film, bro. Yeah, it comes out next week. So that's um, good. I'm sure James Woods is very much looking forward to it. Oh, just go, <laughs> go suck something, James Woods, because I'm sure you don't want to. <laughs> I'm sure that's what annoyed him in the first place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, that brings us to an end on the podcast section this week. <laughs> yes, when we've got James Woods fellating people, then it's time to end. You know that's when you need to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> on which note, here it is. Your moment of James Woods fellating somebody. <laughs> to read me like a fool.